distinguished authorities and attendees to this conference, good morning, and thank you very much for the invitation. Innovation never stops. The pace is accelerating. And as you can understand, these changes have been happening over the last decades. Probably accelerated since the advent of the internet. Once upon a time, any company that wanted to start a project had to think about not only the application to be developed, but also the hardware, the people, the space, air conditioning, and so on. A huge investment. Today, thanks to cloud computing, that becomes a different model. Now you pay as you go. Now you have a menu of options in hardware and software for you to take advantage of. So instead of the period of weeks or months that any due development had to go through in the past, today you can make some changes. You can only think about the application and then contract everything else for you to start offering new services to your clients quickly. The competition is doing it. So companies today will also need to be at that pace. That's happening today. So major companies today like Microsoft, Huawei, Alibaba, now they offer cloud services that allow you to quickly get to market, quickly bring new services to your clients who are demanding for that. And obviously for you, it becomes more efficient to do so. First of all, many people now are using cell phones, connectivity. Therefore, activities that we used to perform in person, attending a conference, going to the bank, or doing any transaction, for example, now happens to be online. So now, that's one factor for this increased data volume. Another one, of course, the richness of the data. Now we're not only using text, now we think about video, conversation, social media, so many different levels of data, obviously, that take more space. And also the number of devices, cell phones, computers, tablets. It's amazing at home how everybody, every member in the family has a screen. And, of course, that's increasing the requirements of companies. How are you going to process the data? You need to still get insights. And that's where big data comes into the picture because you still will need to find how you're going to serve your customer who are using more data, who are requiring more capabilities, and still who demand also better services and products. Big data plays an important role today to be able to accommodate. And 5G plays an important role in only in these two years, since 2019 when 5G was deployed. However, today, there is a change because now, Many of the biggest tech companies in the world now are entering financial services. What are Google, Apple, Facebook doing in payments? What a surprise. So if you think about these companies, they come to financial services from different angles. For example, Microsoft, Google, they come from the operations side. They provide, let's say, cloud computing to financial services companies, and they see the potential to expand. Another approach would be Facebook that have access to 2.5 billion records of users. So they come from the customer-facing side, and they see that clients who trust Facebook would be potentially willing to share their financial information and eventually to take advantage of services provided by Facebook. So the the field, the point of touch, it's going to be different, but nonetheless, these companies, technology companies that are so good at managing data, feel that at the end of the day, delivering financial services becomes a data gate. The more data you have, the better appreciation of your client's profile. So if, when you think about clients who definitely share their information in social media, who share the information of their shopping activity with JD.com, for example, these companies now get access to a universe of data that allows them to price risk, to offer financial services, a province of activities that used to be constrained only to financial services companies. And that's a risk for financial services companies, of course. So what do we think about this transformation? 
that we need to adapt a new approach, and that's the VC approach. This is, of course, as we've seen in some examples before, explore deals. They invest in companies, and they negotiate deals, and they eventually exit. That's something that can, we can take advantage of. Because VC is not only looking at what's happening out there, VC is participating in this transformation through their participation as directors, as leaders, advisors, and recruiting management. A uh, few years ago, I published a book on what happened on the flash crash when 10% of the stock exchanges fell down. That's something that regulators could have prepared for. How? Creating records, creating systems. And unfortunately, that's still not the case in some parts of the world. Let me conclude by indicating that there's really a challenge for us to work on these areas. Because at the end of the day, financial technology, fintech, is viral for people and for companies. What can a person do without a bank account? What can a business do without credit? And unfortunately today, 9% of the population still live in extreme poverty. So we know how critical it's gonna be financial inclusion. When we have to think about expanding this service to the two billion people out there who don't even have any banking or financial service. We owe it to the two billion kids out there. Thank you very much.